All right, it's uh, seven o'clock. We'll call the meeting to order. Um, we have a few people away. We have uh, Mayor Hoke online. Um, is there any additions or deletions to the agenda? None from administration, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, okay, so I want to adopt, or adopt the agenda. Somebody to George, Councillor Hart. Okay. Is there any discussion about it? Um, did we want to read the acknowledgement? Oh, sorry. Yep. We'll do that right after this. Then if we started this, we'll read the acknowledgement. All right. Then um, anybody uh, opposed to the agenda as presented? Okay, I'll take that. Is would somebody like to read the acknowledgement? <laughs> Councillor Hope. <laughs> Today, I acknowledge that the town of Bruderheim is located on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis Nation of Alberta. The town of Bruderheim honors the first peoples of the land, of this land. We recognize that we stand upon land that carries the footsteps of Cree, Métis, and Blackfoot, amongst other nations who have been, there, been here for thousands of years. Therefore, the town of Bruderheim has an inherent responsibility to foster healthier relationships with first peoples and further the calls to action as outlined by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Thank you, Councillor Carter. And at this time, we have some very special guests. Um, we have Miss McKenna Bonner and Adriana Bonner, if they'd like to take the floor. Is there anything you wanted to say to lead up to this, Patty? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, administration was uh, blessed um, with a meeting with young McKenna Bonner who came to ask um, if she could meet with council to discuss an amazing idea she had. So I'm very excited for council to um, hear of her request. Awesome, thank you. Go ahead, McKenna. Hi, my name is McKenna Bonner and I am a plain Cree nine-year-old girl who lives here in Bruderheim, which we know is on Treaty 6 land. My father belongs to Treaty 6 his band is Alexander First Nations. My mother belongs to Treaty 8, which is Fort McMurray 468 First Nations. I do not know if any of my father's families attended residential schools. I know my mother's great aunts and uncles did. They live with a dark past and don't like to talk about their time there. The reason I would like to talk to you about having a sidewalk down is and every child matters design is because I want to bring awareness to my community. I know that residential schools are now closed down, but the effect it still has on my generation is huge. I want people to be aware that this problem is still going on and all children matter. The children that have were taken long ago to the children who never return it, to the survivors who are dealing with the pain of losing their language and culture and for the abuse they were put through, to the children whose parents were survivors and now have to carry the weight and pain on their shoulders, to my generation here, hearing and seeing them try to wipe my culture and ancestors out. So, Counselor, I'm asking you to please consider designing and painting a sidewalk in orange to represent me and every child to show that we matter. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for that, McKenna. Um, so I, I guess there, there's a request. Oh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Is there any questions from council in regards to her? Uh... Her, uh, speech there yeah that was very very well very good job Councilor Carter you did an awesome job is this something that you want to be a part of to help paint the, the sidewalk you would help 
Yeah, you want to do that? I think that sounds like a great idea. Thank you for coming tonight. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you because you understand the reality of your heritage. I'm also proud of you that you had the faith and this courage to come forward with a message with such powerful words as what you have brought today. <clears throat> Secondly, your people and my culture grew up together. My family was a big part of your family's heritage. My grandfather and your Cree nation set teepee together. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Campbell. Mayor Hoke? Um, uh, I would just like to say that I'm very impressed. McKenna, great job. Well done. Thank you for bringing this to our council's attention. And I'd be um, honored and humbled to make that motion. I'd like to say thank you as well, McKenna, for coming out and uh, bringing this forward and bringing it to our attention. And um, and um, we will take a vote on it and and make sure that uh, and try and put this through. Um, is there a certain sidewalk that we're talking about? Is this a certain area? Is there a? Uh, Mr. Chair, I uh, actually had some discussions with McKenna over and her mother the last week, and um, we've kind of settled on from the community hall to the gazebo. Um, we'll be painting that one. And then the entrance sidewalk, I think we'll, um, McKenna picked out, we've been going back and forth and we settled on a beautiful logo that we like for Every Child Matters. And so I think we're going to put the logo on the sidewalk entrance to the gazebo um, sidewalk, and then we'll paint the crosswalk. And I believe they're going to help me on Sunday to do that if, if that works out for them. So, and we have a volunteer um, to do the logo for us too as well. So if council agrees to this. Awesome, thank you. Mayor Hoke. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Chairman uh, Wayne, if it's okay, can I read the motion? Certainly. <clears throat> First of all, I'd like to say, uh, again, I'm sorry that I'm under the weather and I couldn't be here uh, there to greet you. Um, that <clears throat> the motion is that town council accept the information presented by McKenna Bonner and that administration arrange to paint the crosswalks leading to the gazebo orange. Thank you, Mayor Hoke. Is there any discussion on this? Any more discussion? Um, I guess I have some, is this something that we can all support and be out for on, on Sunday for and what time would it be at? Um, I was waiting for the motion to be passed, but it's also cultural day. So I think it will tie in quite nicely on Sunday, starts at three o'clock cultural days at the community hall. So I was gonna talk to the family about um, perhaps we could put some verbiage out there and explain to people what we're doing and yeah, um, public works, because we looked at the weather, they'll be painting, um, the sidewalk white tomorrow, um, the crosswalk, I'm sorry, <clears throat> we were just waiting for council and then uh, on Sunday we'll, um, do more of the, um, the logoing and the stenciling. So yeah, I will get that information out to community. I'll, I'll talk with McKenna and see what we want to do. But I think it's going to be awesome because it's also cultural days on Sunday, celebrating diversity and inclusion in our community with some dancers and other things going on. So I think we can make this really fun. Awesome. Thank you. So I will call. Uh, is um, anybody opposed to the motion? Excellent. Thank you. The motion has passed. So thank you very, very much, McKenna. Thank you for coming out. And um, I look forward to seeing you on Sunday afternoon. And we'll, we'll make this happen. McKenna said that she would sign her artwork with the palm of her hand. Thank you, McKenna. Very nice. Thank you, guys. Just give a moment.
Um, can I get someone to make a motion to adopt the minutes of September 3rd meeting, regular, regular meeting of council? Councilor Carter? A motion to adopt minutes from September 3rd, 2022, regular meeting of council. Okay. Has everybody had a chance to look at it? Anybody have any questions or comments? Okay, I will ask, is anybody opposed to the motion? It has passed. Uh, we'll start with uh, Mayor Hoke, um, information request. Thank you very much, Chairman Wayne. Um, I do have a couple of uh, inquiries. Um, I see the hemp facility looks like they're close to or already producing some product. And I'm just wondering, if there's a potential for our town to partner with them to celebrate their successful startup. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we'll reach out and check. Okay, thank you. And then uh, the other thing is, as I see that the playground is in full swing, I imagine there's some kind of celebration to um, celebrate the residents of the town and the town and uh, uh, administration and council coming together to raise money to uh, with the playground there at the school. Mr. Chair, through Mr. Mayor, I um, have been in contact with school principal and they're still working out the details for the grand reopening. Okay, and just two more things real quick. <clears throat> um, I noticed on the front page of the Lamont Leader today, there was a big article about crime action in, in Bruderhan. I'm just wondering if administration received any information from the RCMP as to what went on there? Uh, Mr. Chair, through Mr. Mayor, no, we haven't. Okay, thank you. That's it. Thank you, Mayor Hope. Councillor Campbell? Yes, uh, seeing that the uh, uh, rail safety awareness uh, has been cancelled, is there another scheduled date for this? Mr. Chair, through uh, Councillor Campbell, we're working to work on yeah, rescheduling that and perhaps tying it in with the uh, police um, uh, real crime type evening as well. Try to do a few of those things in one night. Thank you. Councillor Carter? Again, just reaching out to anybody that uh, might be interested in joining the library board. Um, we're in desperate need of some members, some board members. Um, you can get in touch with the town office and they'll lead you to how to make contact with the library or you can stop by at the library at any time. Um, we're very welcome to new board members and we really like some new ideas. And yeah, that's all I have. Thank you, Councilor Carter. Sorry, Councilor Jacobs. Oh, thank you. Um, just was at my FCSS meeting, and um, I know we discussed that this this fall we were going to start a youth group. Um, FCSS was talking about starting a youth group also, but for sur all surrounding communities to join as one. So I don't know if that's something that we can possibly do, get youth all around involved instead of doing an individual youth committee for our, our town. So just something to look into. Mr. Chair, through Councillor Jacobs, is there somebody that's taking the lead on that that we could touch base with? You can get that back to me. That's, yeah. I will get that back Thank to you. you. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Jacobs. Um, just one thing, there's uh, some work going on at the campground West Woodlands area. Is that Shaw Cable by chance, putting in the line? Uh, Mr. Chair, that's correct. Perfect, thank you very much. Uh, sure, Councilor Carter. Just wondering about the organic bins. That was just a pilot for the summertime, correct? Uh, Mr. Chair, through Councilor Carter, that's correct. It goes to the end of October. And um, actually, um, um, Mrs. Taylor and myself were just working on today some stats to present to Council um, in the budget if we're going to go ahead with that or not once we see all the stats and uh notice is going out to residents that the organics pickup will end at the end of october just a reminder but the carts will stay at your house until next spring 
Okay. Thank you. And Mr. Chair, if I could just answer a question last week from a motion. Um, there was a question if we rolled back franchise fee 2%, what effect that would have on residents? And again, that's based on consumption. So our consumption varies a lot depending on the winter temperatures, but um, I did a five-year average and it would be about $8 a year would be the difference with a 2% rollback. So going from 20% to 18%, um, a resident would see about an $8 savings based on a five-year consumption average. And again, if we had a 40 below winter, it would be different, right? If we have a 20 above winter, it's quite different. So that's the best guess I can give you on that question that was posed last week. Thank you, CAO. Uh, Mayor Hoke. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Wayne. Uh, to follow up uh, with uh, Patty's information about the franchise fees, that was only residential or is that averaged in with the businesses as well? <clears throat> uh, Mr. Chair, through Mr. Mayor, that is correct. That's commercial in there. It's our consumption as a community. Thank you. Um, in regards to, I guess, just in regards to the uh, the pilot, you said the garbage, the the organic bins will be staying until spring. Now, are residents able to use it for anything, or is it just going to be sitting there, taking up space? Yeah, I, they will have to store them for the winter. If they're out for garbage, would they pick it up for garbage? If they're no. using it, no, so, okay. no, so it won't be it won't be tipped at all then. Okay, no, thank you, Councillor Campbell. Uh, Patty, uh, the old town infrastructure in regards to the natural gas system is uh, almost 60 years old or better. Is there any uh, feedback back from uh, ADCO as to uh, um, any uh, upgrades or uh, testing uh, going to be happening, uh, uh, re-establishing of uh, residential lines, uh, re redoing of meters? Um, I know it's a, sort of an, on, uh, a, a, uh, an ongoing thing, but uh, um, I've had the privilege of uh, being exposed to uh, some of the uh, new uh, infrastructure that's going in and, we've, uh, and, and what's going out, and uh, it doesn't look very good, the old stuff. So I just was wondering if there's any plans for in the future. Mr. Chair, through Councillor Campbell, I can uh, send an email to ACCO to ask what their maintenance regular check, they must have a maintenance program. I can check on that. Thank you, Councillor Campbell. Um, program request or with Councillor Jacobs? Nothing at this time, thank you. Councillor Carter? Nothing at this time. Councillor Campbell? Nothing at this time. Mayor Hoke? Nothing at this time, Chairman Wayne. Thank you. Um, request decisions, Northern Lights Library Board. Um, CAO Patty? Thank you, Mr. Chair. The purpose of this report is to seek council approval to send a letter to Minister McGiver as requested by Councillor Len Filardo on September 7th council meeting, supporting the Northern Lights Library Court Board request for additional funding. Administration and recommending that Town Council direct administration to send a letter to Minister MacGyver requesting additional funds for library services. Some history, the Northern Lights Library Board recently sent a letter to Minister MacGyver requesting additional funding for library services. The Library Board has requested the Town send a letter supporting this request. The last increase from the province to library system grants was in 2015 when it was moved from $4.60 to $4.70, a 10 cent raise per resident. During the same period, municipalities have raised their con contributions by 29 cents per resident. Strategic plan areas build a safe and energetic community. Regional library systems provide increased access to larger inventories of resources for our residents. Pursuing excellence, partnering with other organizations to ensure our continued success in rural service delivery. 
In summary, inflation has affected the ability for many organizations to maintain, maintain current service levels to their customers. Increased funding is essential to the ongoing success of the Northern Lights Library Board to continue with the fantastic programming made available to our community. If approved, administration would notify Northern Lights Board of Council's decision. That's everything, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Patty. Um, get someone to make the motion. Councillor Jacobs. I motion that Town Council direct administration to send a letter to Minister MacGyver requesting additional funds for library services. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Councillor Hoke. Uh, thank you, Chairman Wayne. Uh, just a, a thought. Um, it always goes good to uh, include our uh, MLA, Jackie, on any documentation that we're sending to the minister. Can, can we include her on that uh, letter send out? Thank you, Mayor Hoke. I believe CAO Patty said yes. Thank you. Any other discussion? Is there anybody opposed? That's passed. Uh, quarter two management report. CAO Patty. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The purpose of the report is to provide counsel with the Town of Bruderheim's second quarter management report, which includes the financial status report as of June 30th, 2022 for information. Recommending that town that the June 30th, 2022 Town of Bruderheim second quarter management report be received for information. Some history, the Town of Bruderheim 2022 second quarter management report enclosure provides the op operating results for the period compared to the approved budget, otherwise known as the operation variance. On December 15, 2021, Council approved the 2022 capital and interim operating budgets. On May 5th, 2022, Council approved the final operating budget. And on June 15, Council approved the amended 2022 capital budget. Strategic plan area, open and transparent governance. It's a governance requirement to um, provide quarterly management reports to Council. Other impacts, legal and legislative, Municipal Act RSA 2000, Chapter M26, Section 268.1B. The actual revenues and expenditures of the municipality compared with the estimates in the operating and capital budget approved by Council are reported to Council as often as Council directs. In summary, administration reviewed the financial results of June 30th and is providing council with a status report. Operations are on track with the following summary, revenue amounts of $2,382,566 to June 30th, expenses of $1,540,727 to June 30th, approved capital budgets totaling 987,000 and the projects that have been paid to June 30th total $192,107 which includes 10,683 from 2020 capital for the water reservoir with a 2022 budget amount remaining of $805,575. The town's reserve balance as of June 30th was $1,173,825. The town's bank account balance of June 30th is $1,788,503. The town's line of credit balance is zero. Long-term debt Ventures of the Fire Hall and the 2017 Street Improvement Program total repayment in 2022 is 125,522, which includes a lump sum payment of 32,148 to pay out the loader. Communication, the quarterly management report will be published on the Town of Bruderheim website, and we've attached the Town of Bruderheim second 2022 second quarter management report, Mr. Chair. Thank you, CEO Patty. Uh, get someone to make the motion. Councillor Campbell. Sorry, I can't hear. Can you bring your mic closer to you too, please? <clears throat> yeah. I make a motion that council <clears throat> that council was oh, excuse me, I can't see very good. Uh, I haven't brought it here. Excuse me, somebody else, please. No worries, Councilor Carter. Uh, motion that June 30th, 2022, Town of Bruderheim second quarter management report be received for information. Thank you, Councilor Carter. Is there any discussion? Mayor Hoke. Thank you, uh, Chairman Wayne. I just wanted to commend the administration for a great job on this report. A lot of uh, really excellent things in, in 
trained in this under all of the priorities. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, just a couple of inquiries. Um, <clears throat> it was mentioned in uh, priority threes that the reciprocal use agreement is completed with Elkhorn Public Schools. I, uh, pardon my fuzzy head, but I, I don't remember seeing that document. Uh, has that been shared with council yet? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll recirculate that document for council. I appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, the other question that I had is um, we had heard before that um, the collection of taxes was a little bit low uh, last meeting, I think, and just wondering how how is that looking now? Mr. Chair, through Mr. Mayor, um, I haven't checked since the last meeting. Um, I don't anticipate we'll get much more before the next penalty date of uh, December 31st. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else have any questions? I have one just um, on the debent the total debenture is just those two items, the fire hall and uh, and the street improvement, is that correct? For a total of 125,000? That's the total repayment this year. Oh, okay. So that's not, how much is the total, you know? And... Um, Sharon, do you have that total? I can get that back to council. Okay, no worries, thank uh, you. Yep. Oh. oh, I don't have that with me, but I thought that it was in the package. I... Oh, I think... It... I didn't see it. I may have a middle oversight, but well, I can make sure that you get it tomorrow. Okay, thank you. No worries. You're welcome. Uh, no other question. Oh, Councillor Campbell. Can the administration enlighten uh, council on uh, uh, what has not been completed in regards to the capital budget projects? Uh, Mr. Chair to Mr. Mayor, sorry, to Councillor Campbell. Um, the playground, which is a huge one, 375,000. And um, of course, the um, we were supposed to do the relining of the, um, the sewer line. And that is, um, as you know, the bid price came in quite high. And so now we're looking at um, a total um, pipe replacement. Sorry, that one is 375,000 and the park is 315. So that's the bulk of the two capital projects that haven't been completed yet. Thank you, CAO Patty. Any other questions or comments, Mayor Hoke? Yeah, thank you, uh, Chairman Wayne. Um, when we're talking park, you're talking the park at the community park at the campground, right? Mr. Chair, through Mr. Mayor, that's correct. Okay. And um, further on the project side, the outdoor rink boards, is that on track for uh, repairs this year? Um, Mr. Chair, through Mr. Mayor, that is correct. I believe that that was in the CA report that um, they came out and sized um, up the boards that need replacing. So that is on schedule to be replaced this year. Great. Thank you, Mary Hope. Thank you, CEO Petty. Any other questions or comments? All right. Is anybody opposed to the motion? All right. The motion is passed. <clears throat> uh, 8.3 public auction. Uh, somebody make a motion. I'd be happy to make that motion, Chairman Wayne. Mayor Hoke. <clears throat> uh, public auction that town council approved the 2022 public auction for properties registered for tax recovery to be held on November 25th, 2022 at 2pm. Thank you, Maria Hulk. And I think I went a little too far ahead. I should ask CEO Patty for info leading up to it, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the purpose of this report is to provide council with the information to set a property tax auction date for 2022. That Town Council approved the 2022 public auction for properties registered for tax recovery to be held on November 25th, 2022 at 2 p.m. Some history, Section 418.1 of the Municipal Government Act, the MGA, specifies that a municipality must offer for sale at a public auction any parcel of land shown on its tax arrears list if the tax arrears are not paid. 
The date of the public auction must be advertised in the Alberta Gazette and in the local paper, MGA 421-1AB, by August 1st, 2021. All affected property owners are advised by the Alberta Land Titles Office, the registrar, that a tax notification has been registered on their property as a result of tax arrears. As of September 15th, there are four properties to be advertised for sale by public auction, consisting of three residential properties and one commercial property. A reserve bid for each affected property will be established by the town's appointed assessor and will be based on a market value. The town of Bruderheim may become the owner of any parcel of land immediately after the public auction if the parcel has not been sold. The town must then request the registrar to cancel the existing certificate title for the parcel of land and issue certificate of title in the name of the town of Bruderheim, according to section 424 of the MGA. Strategic plan areas, ensuring the town is actively pursuing accounts that are in arrears, maintaining our financial stability. Other impacts, le legislative and legal, section 424, section 421, section 418, tax recovery, municipal government act, RSA 2000, chapter M26. The MGA specifies the timelines and requirements that municipalities are to follow in the tax recovery process. Advertisement will be placed in the Alberta Gazette with a copy of this ad of the ad being sent to the affected landowners. That's everything, Mr. Chair. Thank you, CEO Patty. Um, I guess since I overstepped, Carl, you're still good with the motion that you made? Yes, sir. Thank you. Is there any discussion on the motion? Councillor Carter? Just wondering um, what the process is leading up to getting to the point of auctioning off properties like um just the process like um how, what was the timeline um miss st Clair, do you want to respond to that please so the properties that are going for tax auction um were listed um, at least a year ago. So they've had a whole year um, after being notified by Alberta registries that there is a tax notification on their property. Um, what we're doing tonight is asking that council set a date for the auction. Uh, so the advertising can be done. There's some um, guidelines on how much time there is for advertising prior to the auction. Uh, a letter will be going out along with the ad to the affected properties. And from there, there'll be another um, report coming to council, setting out the reserve bids. And um, how, how the auction will go as far as uh, what will, how we'll collect the monies, whether we have cash up front or, or whatever council decides, but that will come to council in a report prior to the auction. And Ms. Sinclair, um, prior to receiving notice, how long does a resident able to be in arrears before we send notice of arrears? Is it two years? Uh, well, after it's one year, then it gets registered and then they have another year before we can right. take it to auction. Yeah. Two years in total, so. And so they have up until the established auction date to pay. And then if they don't pay by that date, that's when it goes. Thank you, Ms. Sinclair and CEO Patty. Uh, Mayor Hoke. Okay. Thank you, Chair Wayne. Um, just a question for administration. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. When was the last time that we actually had a public auction for tax recovery? Ms. St. Clair, I'm not, for the six years I've been here, we haven't. I don't recall exactly when it was, but yes, it's been some time. Yeah, that's what I thought. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> and so these ones that are going to auction, there has been no attempt to make any payment. Is that correct? Or there has been, or how does that work? They have they only made some, but not enough. How does that work? I guess. Um, Mr. Chair, you, you can't be in arrears. So, um, as soon as you're in arrears, that's registered. And if you come and make a contract, um, with administration to get out of arrears, there's, um, if they did do that, and then there's a clause to protect the residents of Bruderheim that if they default on a payment, then that's null and void, right? So 
um, a number of attempts are made to try to help people get caught up or to um, some residents that have fallen behind. They've paid up um, this year's taxes and then, or a lot, they pay up their arrears and then join the TIPS program where you can pay monthly. So administration tries very hard to help um, people that are in arrears, but um, I also have to protect the interests of the other residents that are paying their taxes as well, so. Perfect, thank you. So there are options if they so choose to take them. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Councillor Campbell? What becomes of this prof property if it does become the, the property of the town? Um, Mr. Chair, to Mr. Campbell, then the town's responsible for the maintenance and care of that property until we can sell it. Chairman Lane? Um, to, my, to my knowledge, and uh, the time that I've been on as mayor, uh, com one commercial property became town property, and that's where the Suite 6 Hotel uh, was built on. That that property defaulted on taxes and became town property. But uh, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, administration, people have until the day before, and lots of times it never gets to the auction. It actually gets paid off before. Am I right? Uh, Mr. Chair, through Mr. Mayor, that is correct. That is typically the path that happens. Thank you, Mayor Hoke. Is there any other questions or comments? Councilor Campbell? I just don't want the town to be in a situation where we become real estate owners. That's fair. Um, I guess that there's no other, there's nothing we can do to, to stop that. It's I guess it goes to auction. If it doesn't go, it becomes ours, and it's and then it's sold. We recoup the costs, and then the rest of that funds go to the registered owner at the previous. That's absolutely correct. Um, so if we um, the property sells, um, we're able to take what's owing to us, and then of course, if there's a mortgage on the property, um, they're also notified, and um, it's like. Um, the legal process, right, of who gets paid first, but taxes get paid first. And we can't sell a property less than um, market value, right? So we can't just say they owe us $500. Um, I mean, I'm just picking numbers and the property is worth 500000 We can't just sell it for five hundred dollars to just worry about our interest. We're not allowed to do that, so. Okay. So if it doesn't go, we recoup there. If it does sell, we recoup our costs and then a new owner obviously takes place. If we take possession of it, um, we we in turn have to try and sell it. Do we sell it for market value or market value plus? Like, how does that, does that make sense? Yeah, in the MGA, there's consideration for our um, expenses in managing the property as well. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Um, is anybody opposed to the motion? Oh. In regards to the last piece of property that was sold for taxes and come back as town property, we held on to that piece of property for many years before we sold it for $1. Um, we paid taxes on it, we paid the upkeep, and it was just a vacant lot at that time. If these are building, these are premises with properties with buildings on them, it's not just cutting the grass and everything, it's the total upkeep, and that's keep making sure that the buildings are kept in good shape, the heat's on, and maintained, plus we pay the taxes. That's all I'm saying is in regards to becoming a real estate owner. Yeah. Mr. Thanks. Chair, as long as council understands, this isn't our decision. This is a municipal government act that dictates how we will behave for tax reverse. Yeah. Thank you. So again, I'll call the, call the question. Uh, anybody opposed to the motion? No, and it's been passed. 8.4 North Saskatchewan Watershed Alliance, CAO Patty. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Purpose of this report is to acquire a financial commitment from Council to the North Saskatchewan Watershed Alliance for 2023. 
The town council approved the commitment of 50 cents per capita for a total of $697.50 in the 2023 operating budget to the North Saskatchewan Watershed Alliance. Council, along with more than 40 municipalities, has supported the North Saskatchewan Watershed Alliance through donations to help offset their operating costs. Bruderheim is important to the watershed because the water the town needs comes from the landscape upstream of the town. While town stormwater or wastewater can affect the landscape downstream. This means the sustainability and an important goal for any municipality is best achieved at a watershed cycle scale. Sorry. For more than 22 years, the North Saskatchewan Watershed Alliance has been building collaborative partnerships to steadily improve how we manage our rivers, wetlands, and lakes using the best and most applicable science. This important work is accomplished because of the generous support of our municipalities in the Northwest North Saskatchewan Watershed Alliance the provincial government and water utilities, strategic plan areas, create and maintain responsible infrastructure and development, ensuring the protection of our natural resources for generations to come is the responsibility of today's leadership. Pursuing excellence municipal leadership, partnering with other organizations to ensure our continued viability. In summary, the North Saskatchewan Watershed Alliance leverages donations to apply for additional grant funding at a ratio of three to one, enabling them to continue their great work for our region. The communication plan of approved administration will notify the North Saskatchewan Watershed Alliance of the commitment for the 2023 from the town of Bruderheim. And that's everything, Mr. Chair. Thank you, CEO Patty. Uh, someone would like to make the motion? Motion first. No. Councillor Carter? That town council approves a commitment of uh, 50 cents per capita for a total of $697.50 in the 2023 operating budget to the North Saskatchewan Watershed Alliance. Thank you, Councillor Carter. Is there any questions or comments? Councillor Jacobs? What was uh, the contribution last year for it? I believe I will double check that it was exactly the same, it, but it's based on population. So the census. Um, uh, like it was 50 cents per capita. So the census, our numbers have gone down. So the contribution's gone down. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jacobs. Anybody else have any questions? Mayor Hoke? Uh, just wanted to add that this important organization uh, works together with many levels of government and looks after needs of the river from the headwaters in the mountains to where it exits the province. And they, they partner with the government many times for grant dollars to do all kinds of studies and work on, on the health of the river. And uh, I think it's important for our community to be a part of this. Thank you to administration for bringing it forward. Thank you, Mayor Hulk. Any other questions or comments? All right, uh, anybody opposed to the motion? Okay. Motion's been passed. Uh, 9.1 Mayor and Council Committee Reports. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to receive the reports as presented. I'd be happy to make that motion. No one Mayor else. Hoke. Um, thank you for that. Um, that council received the Mayor and Council Committee reports as information. Thank you, Mayor Hoke. Is there any discussion or comments? Uh, anybody opposed to the motion? And passed. Uh, CAO report. Somebody like to make the motion? Councillor Jacobs? The council received the CAO report as information. Thank you, Councillor Jacobs. Is there any questions or comments? Councillor Carter? When will the arena be opened? <laughs> Mr. Chair, through Councillor Carter, October 3rd is the planned day open. And Patty, will there be public skating or shinny incorporated this year? Uh, Mr. Chair, through Councillor Carter, yes, um, it's looking like Saturdays will be um, that we're just a few more um, late entries for people wanting ice. So we'll fit that in. And of course, I mean, I really encourage residents to look on our um, website because if um, some of the teams that have scheduled ice are playing out of town, then we'll put in more shinny and public skate there. So it really is a moving moving target on the weekly, but we will schedule some permanent time. And then of course, if there's a tournament on a weekend, 
um, the Shinny and Public Skate would have to move, but um, generally it looks looking like Saturdays for sure. And also the concession inside the arena, is um, there anybody going to be operating that this year? Mr. Chair, through Councillor Carter, yes, actually we've, um, the Ukrainian Village has agreed to do it again. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Carter. Mayor Hoke. Um, thank you, Chair Wayne. That's great news about the concession. Um, just a question on uh, timing of events. I understand that um, events are being shuffled around a little bit and the uh, <clears throat> Queen's Park event and the recognition of the Queen's passing, that, that will be scheduled at a later time. Mr. Chair, through Mr. Mayor, um, a meeting with the Ag Society on Friday. Um, that was uh, their initiative. They came to the town for that event and uh, we'll be looking at rescheduling, yes. Thank you. And last inquiry is um, today I've uh, determined that today in Alberta is Alberta Ag Society's day, a uh, day to recognize the contributions of uh, Ag Societies in Alberta. So thank you to the Bruderheim Ag Society. Thank you for that, Mayor Hoke. Is there any other questions or comments? Um, is the Ukrainian village, are they going to be open uh, like soon or is it going to be a delayed opening again? Is, all the, is everything ready? Are the inspections done? Are the uh, fire inspection, all that kind of stuff's done? <laughs> Mr. Chair, um, I'm not sure about all the, um, Mr. Thomas Shad, are you online? I think he was planning on it. Yep, I'm here. Are the inspe inspections done in the canteen? Yeah, the <clears throat> the fume hood and what have you will be done, I believe. I believe it's actually tomorrow. I haven't got my calendar open. And all the other inspections and mechanical and HVAC throughout all our town home buildings will be done over the next couple of weeks. Awesome. Thank you very much. And is there anything that the Ukrainian village is responsible for for inspection. Do they have to have? Is there just just their food, their health inspector? Yeah, the um, actual food handling permit is on them. So um, yeah, I don't imagine they would have any issues. And I haven't. We haven't provided them the schedule, so we haven't nailed down when they're going to be open yet. So awesome. Thank you. Anything else? All right, uh, anybody opposed to the motion? That motion is passed. And Mr. Chair, just since we're talking about the arena, um, a question was asked about Lamont. Um, they're planning an opening the same time as us and we'll discuss um, the springtime. Hopefully we get through a full season and <laughs> both of us, <laughs> um, but we're both opening at the same time this year. There was, I think you asked about a delayed start and there won't be a delayed start this year. Um, and we'll talk about the spring if one of us is going to close early and then maybe um, take turns every year doing that. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess correspondence and information. Um, correspondence, I don't have anything other than so FCSS uh, board meeting, Elkhorn Public School board meet minutes, and the letter from uh, Alberta municipalities in regards to Queen's Jubilee medals. So, um, get someone to make a motion to accept those, I guess. Councillor Jacobs. A motion that town council accept the September 3rd to 16, 2022 correspondence as presented. Any discussion or questions? Anybody opposed? That's passed. And I guess that is it. Look, some, look forward to somebody to. Oh. Hi. <laughs> Someone make a motion. <laughs> I'd be happy to make the motion to adjourn the meeting, Chairman Wayne. Thank you. Great job. <laughs> Any discussion at all? No, no, no. We're going to sit here for a while. <laughs> Anybody opposed to the motion? All right, motion's carried. Thank you guys very much. And uh, yeah, Councilor only Dana, a couple. Councilor Dana, um, I found a grant that Toronto Blue Jays gives money.